comes from the fort of Glen. Yeah. This is what the town land looks like. It has a kind of a triangular shape, hasn't it? Yes. Yeah. Uh, there would be the fort that would give the town land its name. And this linen school, which is not in the town land at all. Yeah, just on the outside of the bar. Yeah, and this is List Linen Road, I think, here now they call it. Yeah. Mountain View House here, and the old Green Road that comes out on the Mullafari Church Road. Is that what they were called? Yeah, the Church Road, I think. Yeah. He would be the site of uh, Mullafari Law. A lot of part of it came in here. Into that town end, right. Yeah. Mm. And this is where the waterworks is today, where they're building the, uh, the reservoirs. The reservoirs, right. yes. Two well, three of them and all. Yeah. Over the unusual coloured rock is in the ground. That's right. Yeah. But, uh, a fault in the limestone. Yeah. An old town land. It hasn't changed that much the map in 150 years. Well, the, the fields are very regular. They must be, uh, those are all new field fences, I would imagine. Yeah. And this is where it starts now. Mm. On the Mulafari Road. We're standing now on the, uh, on the bridge that separates um, Lis Glennon from Valention. Valention on this side, Lis Glennon there. Yeah. <coughs> to, the, to the left of the road now. All to the left of the road. Way back as far as the old uh, <coughs> church of the Presbyterian. Is it a Presbyterian church that's close it's on the left? Church of Ireland. Church of Ireland. Church of Ireland yeah. on, on the left. Yeah. <coughs> and that stream now drains or did drain um, the lake originally. Mullafari Lake. Mullafari Lake. <coughs> to the left, it's a big area there. Called Valentine. Or called uh, List Linen. List Linen. Yeah. Well, it's not being distributed. Some of the care are then Pavadil going to have both. Now, on the right here is uh, Sahi, and on the <coughs> left is uh, List Linen. That's right. And we're heading up now in the direction of the Presbyterian Church yeah. <coughs> and, the, and the waterworks. And there's a lot of activity there now. There is indeed, and you, you can see the heavy power lines. Well, you can just catch them. There's one. Yeah. Crossing mm. down to Asahi, in town of Moor. Yeah, that's it. Now, on the right of this road is Mullafari now, and on the left is uh, Lisslin. Lisslin. That's it. Mm. And this is one of the openings now into the waterworks. Yeah. And here is the Presbyterian Church in Mullafari on the other side. Mm. And the waterworks as they walk out here. Now this is the waterworks here, Ken. Mm, that's right. Um, opposite the, the entrance of the Presbyterian Church. And you can see a drag line there and a whole lot of demountable huts. <coughs> Further back now in that direction there are two reservoirs being excavated. Uh, and we'll be able to get those from the other yeah. the other road. Yeah. Well this is the water system now to bring the water to Kilala, isn't it? Yeah, well... Kalala, it's an auxiliary scheme for Kalala, but I think it, it includes a whole lot of group schemes down then. Oh, yeah. It goes down to Rakesh, across at Palmerstown Bridge, uh, and <laughs> on then... Um, Ballycastle? In the direction of Ballycastle, but I think it stops before it reaches there. Yeah. This is the Church of Ireland, uh, Lis Linen. Uh, Mullafari Church, although in actual fact uh, it's in Lis Linen townland. It was built according to the information I have here in 1810 with a grant of £1,025 and plus a loan of £946.3 and a penny. Um, the parish is a union of Balasikiri and Rarehi and that came about in 1831. <coughs> the, uh, Vicar in charge here in 1825 was Joseph Verscoy, and by 1831 he had become Archdeacon. Then the next name I have here is Reverend James Meehan. He was here in 1846 and 1847. And after him now is James Verscoy, 
was probably some relation of the Joseph earlier on. <coughs> he was here 1852 to 57. Maybe before, maybe longer than that, I don't know. Next name I have is Thomas J. Fowler, 1861 to 66. Then for the year 1854, uh, we have the name Joseph Ford, uh, and his residence was given as Rad Lance. Uh, <coughs> and his name came from the um, Newton White Roll Book. Um, then Canon Perjo, who is who's buried in here, he was here for 40 years, uh, and he died in 1946 at the age of 92. <coughs> After him, or later than him, now there may have been others in between, there was a Dr. Bryan, and in 1929 a Reverend Mr. Kenny, and it must have been sometime in the early 30s that the church was closed down. Yeah. Right, uh, a correction. <coughs> I understand that... Um, <coughs> the locals say that uh, this remained open uh, until 1974 or thereabouts. About 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. And here they have a... Uh, this is the notice board. <coughs> they had 12.30 services. And 3 o'clock on the third Sunday of the month. <coughs> and there was a Holy Communion service on the second Sunday of each month. Yeah. Behind me here is... Uh, Miss Glennon established church according to the Commission of Public Instruction 1831. Barisakiri then had 667 members of the established church, and we presume they practiced in here. It had also 5,052 Catholics. Uh, now, they wouldn't be practicing here, they'd be practicing the Catholic church, and 11 of other Protestant religious persuasions. Uh, in 1834, um, this church here had 715 members of the established yeah, there were 5,423 Catholics, well, they be, again they wouldn't be practicing here, and 11 uh, of other religious persuasions. Uh, uh, Linen established church closed about 10 years ago, I am told. Now this is the tomb of Reverend Canon Perdo. to the memory of his wife, May Isabella Perugia, <coughs> who was born on the 19th of May 1855 and died 16th December 18, 1924. And also the Reverend John Robert Perugia will be a canon of Kilala for 40 years. The beloved rector of the Spanish died 26th of April 1946 in his 92nd year. <coughs> and then there's a scripture quotation. And it was erected by his, her sorrowing husband and children. Well, the local people now thought very highly of Canon Perch. <coughs> he was a very charitable man and a very likeable person, it seems, as well. And <coughs> they still tell about him going round on his pony and trap, uh, delivering clothing and uh, to uh, uh, anybody who needed it. Yeah, other necessities to yeah. the poor, yeah. Now here we have a tomb of a man that saw action in the army out in India. The Colonial, colonial Army. Light Dragoons of Bangalore, East India. <coughs> His name was Beresford Gillespie Taylor. Um, and it's also to the memory of his wife, Margaret, who was a daughter of E. Buck of Kalana. Well, that man, o overhead then, this the coat of, of arms of his regiment, I would take it. <coughs> Feed in on teapot. Well, <coughs> I take it that's the person with faith needn't be afraid. Uh, yeah. And then there's an arm, a sword arm, uh, a mailed arm over that. And these people, I understand, lived in Rehi, so, uh, <coughs> where John John Delivery lived, I think. Yeah. Taylors. <coughs> We're standing here now beside the school which was uh, attached to the church and according to the list I have here now if, if 1831 to 1834 um, this was a boys and girls school and it had a subsidy of two pounds from uh, per year from Archdeacon Verscoy and a shilling per quarter from the London Hibernian Society now whether that's for the whole school or for each child I don't know the teacher's name, I forget whether I said it, was William McAndrew. 
at that time. Yeah. Behind me here now is the Church Education Society School House, as it was called by O'Donovan, near the established church. Uh, you said a minute ago, Ken, it was a boys' and a girls' school. William McCandle was a master. It had 74 males and 43 females, and making a total of 117 pupils attending the school in 1835. Yeah. There was also a hedge school here, far over near where Carson's is today. It was over in Ballantine, not in this townland. I think we missed it. Uh, we didn't miss the location of the school, but we didn't know who was teaching it. Uh, it was a head school. John Carson was the master. Children brought contributions from a shilling to three shillings a quarter. It had 43 males and 22 females, making a total of 65 around 1835. Now, this would be further back in Ballantine townland, near this head school. We're about halfway down the slope now. <coughs> there, uh, on top of the hill, uh, is the church. And behind us then, <coughs> at the other end, is uh, Martin McAndrews Quarry. We're on the townland boundary here now. <coughs> Liz Glennon uh, goes in, in that direction. Uh, it follows that um, fence in there. Oh. Follows the fence away down there. Further along. Uh, it bears away to the right, uh, just when we get out of view there. Yeah. And from there on then, uh, there's a stream, uh, is the boundary. Mm -hmm. And the stream goes down first. There's another road then um, at the other end. <coughs> and that would be the far boundary of Liz Glen. Yeah, the that's the main Cunil Road going on to Kincon. Yeah. Yeah. 